What up everybody, it's me, Mr. Rat here with a spell sword cards origins part one to explanations to help those understand and accumulate knowledge of what it means to play this particular game and need an understanding of what they're getting into prior to making their character. But first, going to the Discord, when you press the cog button over to your upper right hand side of your device, you want to go there, be a part of the Discord, the developer influx, he listens to his community, the community communicates well, everybody's always asking uh, positive questions and getting positive feedback. I personally been there since day one. Haven't had a bad, uh, you know, vibe yet. Uh, hopefully that continues. And uh, any bugs or any questions or anything y'all want to know, I guarantee you, if it's going to be there. And if it's not there, it is. It will be there. So going to the uh, classes. Going to go with a ideal with the class the ideal race or races and then the paths if it is needed with the warrior you can go and build the warrior however you really want to it is not something that's just like oh man i can't wait to make a warrior uh just because it's not you know not one of my favorites uh but it does help everybody get to know what to do with their uh their particular with how to play the game ideal race is half orc because the hp pool that both of them generate you can easily reach triple digits uh if you play it right uh and you level it well uh with rogue you're generating a lot of money you got you got a lot of hand advantage you're attacking a lot uh, ideal race would be human because of the money aspect there. Uh, if you're wanting a lot of money, this combination here is fantastic. Uh, as far as path, um, any of these paths could really work. Um, uh, probably go with darkness or ice or even fire uh, to both control my opponent's hand, control my opponent's hand and uh, options that they can do to affect me and or just to be uh, all out aggressive priest i prefer priest over warrior but priest is a defensive type class uh, with it uh, i would recommend dwarf because dwarf has a particular skill that offers a block after each turn so with uh, priest you get to maintain those particular blocks every turn instead of them disappearing after either getting hit or not getting hit like every other class uh, they have a card in here that you get every turn if you don't play it then you're not playing priest right but you know everybody plays different and you know i can't fault people for that so you maintain your blocks so you can go ahead and max out if you wanted to uh, be that defensive physical person and you could choose your uh, you could choose your particular fights in this so you can just keep fighting those uh, physical uh, fighting AI so it's like okay I know what this guy does I know what this girl does I know what this creature does and go ahead and skip 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 oh here was a physical being and attack 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 they can't get through me uh ideal path would be light um because of mana i would probably go with either elf or human uh even dragonborn uh just because mana can play into um you know in the court here so with mage mage is a squishy body so you really have to first watch for that secondly uh elf would be the ideal second to that uh dragonborn maybe demon spawn and human every other race that isn't dwarf or uh, orc that's where you want to go now, as far as early game, you definitely want to try to get offensive spells to take out your opponents faster than they can you because, again, squishy body and you don't want that. So you can go with ice, uh, fire, or darkness. Now, if you want to 
uh, you know, worry about more healing. Then, of course, you've got light over here. Um, but you definitely want to, if you want to be offensive, definitely go with fire or path of darkness here. Those two, uh, along with being either elf or human, because, you know, with these particular two, you get to change your path somewhere along the line. Uh, if you want more flexibility, go with human. If you just want uh, a bit of uh, customization between paths, then go elf, even though it has the bigger mana pool. Now we have monk, my personal favorite class that rivals ninja. Ideal setup here would be exactly this here. Monk and this driver outside on their motorcycle. We got Dragonborn Fire Monk. I enjoy the aggressiveness that this build has. I will definitely make it a part of one of my playthroughs when I get down to it. But with Monk, like in Demon Tide, you have to build up... Uh, key charges in this particular game and every time you attack that's a key charge and as you level up you get to open up gates and those gates will benefit you later on as the fights continue longer and drawn out or whatever the case is and monk does have uh supportive skills to keep it going and uh so that way you don't have to go through the path of light to heal now, I would go with Path of Fire, uh, maybe Darkness, uh, Ice, or Nature, but particularly Fire and Nature are my ideal choices. Um, if you want it to not be a Dragonborn, uh, again, uh, Half Orc, uh, even Dwarf would be ideal because, again, this is a kind of a universal uh, class to where you can be uh, magic based or you can be physical based or you can be both and play it out just as well. Uh, with Ranger, you have an assortment of things you can do. Uh, ideal uh, build here would be Elf and Nature. Now, again, it doesn't have to go that way. You can play it however you want to. Uh, but with the Ranger build, you have to be a bit more patient than the other classes. You just can't come out of the gate of just attack, attack, attack. You have very few attacks, but you do have what we call the Quiver system. So you, you generate charges, and then the next uh, turn, you get back four arrows. And so you can attack with those arrows, and of course... Just like in Monk, you level up your uh, bow and that puts out more damage. And if that's your thing of putting out damage, uh, you have familiars in this particular class. And these, this is the only class that has familiars. And so you get a familiar that uh, punishes your opponent for casting magic. There's a familiar for uh, manipulating your opponent's hand is a familiar for adding more damage to your arrow attacks and then there's a familiar for just uh, being the aid for the more magical oriented uh, uh, ranger and then if you're uh, you know more prone to you know playing a little bit defensive there's uh, arrows and stances for that if you wanted to be a little bit more uh, controlling there's arrows for that. There's a lot to, to, to offer here in your in your particular way how you want to play uh, Ranger, be it with familiars or a little bit more magical oriented or controlling your opponent's hand or just causing a rain of arrows all at one time at one particular turn. Uh, it just it it's it's a really fun class there. Uh, my all-time favorite uh, and the ideal build is Ninja, Dragonborn, and Path of Darkness. Uh, Ninja is a very controlled oriented class. It's my personal class that I um, help influence in both this game and in Demon Tide. Uh, with this class here, 
you control your opponent almost at every reach. Now, uh, in order to control them, you have to have either darkness or ice. Uh, and Dragonborn, being that you get that extra card, it helps with burn. So there's the path of fire you could also do. If you want to do more than just one, then you can go with elf. That is a good second, uh, if not close to a tie first of ideal playthrough with uh, ninja, elf, and ice, or ninja, elf, and darkness, or, or fire. Uh, and, and of course, you get to mix the two which I would recommend darkness and ice. Uh, I would probably go with darkness first because of the hand discarding and then uh, throwing out substitutions for any physical attacks and anti any uh, throw it, throwing of dust to counter cards. Your counter, 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 and they're just wasting resources trying to get to you, but you're not there. You're, uh, you know, substituting over here, stabbing, boom. And then you got a plethora of different cards uh, that either help boost your, um, boost your, your, your attack value. Um, there's cards that uh, cause your opponent to take damage whenever they come after you and they get through all of your, your traps and subterfuge. Uh, subterfuge, subterfuge and all this and that uh, there's different cards that cause different ailments um, there's card there's a few cards that uh, cause the first card to uh, you know be null and void so again very control heavy uh, you know class here then we got the druid the druid you can deck manipulate your opponent so you can go ahead and throw all of your minions into your uh, your opponent's deck. And then after one specific turn, after they're out of cards, they draw and draw and draw until they draw, you know, all of your opponent, uh, all of your minions that that's in the deck. Uh, not only that, but you can build around a physical base where you go into your uh, beast form and then all of your minions and your physical attacks uh, get a buff and the ideal um, uh, ideal uh, build there would definitely be uh, Dragonborn or uh, uh, Elf or Dwarf uh, even um, <laughs> unfortunately even, uh, even Orc but uh, because of mana reasons you want to go with um, the human Elf Dragonborn, and um, I personally like you know maxing out my 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 minions and throwing them all in there, and then giving them a good call of the wild and reach and like just bringing them all forth and causing some massive damage there. Um, and like I said, you can build it how you want to. Uh, and now here comes one of the hardest, <laughs> one of the hardest. Uh, classes to play is Bard. Now it goes off of inspiration. Now Bard is a hard class to play but is a high risk high reward type if I were to say so. Uh, mainly because you have to get inspiration Those in that inspiration buffs up all of your physical attacks for a turn even during your opponent's turn so your, your even the most smallest card can carry so much weight so if you had that one star um, physical attack card is hitting one damage now it's hitting possibly double digits with uh, how much uh, inspiration you can got you got going on so uh, definitely uh, something if you if you really wanted to try <laughs> um, to be a champ about it bard demon spawn and fire that right there if you could beat that then you know hey um but ideal i'd probably go with you know any any of the races could really go but you know i always fall back to uh dragonborn just because of its well-roundedness and lastly um firstly uh the ideal path is obviously darkness it synergizes so well 
with uh, Necromancer. So uh, you build up soul charges and your soul charges <clears throat> build uh, up uh, kind of like a bank uh, for your particular skill set. So you can start filling your opponent's deck up uh, with souls or you can cause some ravishing damage with one particular magical attack that really makes your opponent suffer uh, because again it, it synergizes well with darkness it's between elf and dragonborn and even demon spawn uh, that I would go with necromancer um, you I, I can't really go into detail too much with how much the synergy is there between these two uh, the darkness and necromancer it's just there and you'll see why if you played it Comment, like, subscribe if this video helps you at all uh, understand any of the classes and all the classes to some degree. Uh, feel free to let me know. And anything you want to see concerning spell, uh, spell sword cards origins, let me know in the comment section.